Good day, everybody. How's it going this week? Well, last weekend, um, a convention happened in California, in the, in the southern parts of California, I believe it's the southern parts of California, called Califer. Now, attendance on it went pretty well. It's a nice and steady convention. It's at well, 1,300 people being served at a furry convention. These days, that's considered one of the medium-sized convention. Not really, not really growing monstrously, but a nice, solid convention for the people in California. They had an interesting weekend this weekend. Three events, three events occurred at this one convention. Three events occurred, like news events, occurred around this convention. And all three events had really nothing to do with one another, which is the most, even more fascinating part. So today, we're going to go over those three um, we're going to go over those three events with you today. One of them happened before the convention, the second one happened during the convention, and the third one happened after the convention. So, and once again, the events have nothing to do with one another, except for that they seem to revolve around this one Californian convention. So let's... Uh-oh. What's that sound? Oh goodness! Someone call the cops. So with that, using my impromptu sound effects, let's move on to uh, the first problem. I don't even know if you could hear that, but basically there were sirens in the background. <laughs> so the thing that happened before the convention. Now, many people are familiar with this event. It, happened, it, was, um, it actually affected the convention in a negative manner. Um, panels got canceled. Um, particularly, there are panels that were revolving around um, the BDSM and baby fur communities. It was a more adult-oriented panel, and for those of you who don't know what BDSM is or any of that stuff, it's basically um, it's a it's an adult thing. It's basically um, play around the fact that you can't move very much. Then we'll leave it at that. But in essence, what happened is, is that someone was so outraged and so upset about these people having their panel during the adult times and the adult things and having an adult panel there that somebody, and nobody still knows who, it's under investigation, called in violent, threats of violence into the hotel and to the staff of the convention. So these threats that were made were in, are investigated, you know, the regular authorities were involved, and the convention, you know, discussed it with them and stuff like that on what measures they could take. Um, eventually, the convention made the decision that it would be better to, you know, remove those panels from the lineup, and there were, I guess there was a few other panels sort of relating that also were given the axe in order to promote a better and secure um, event and take the threats of violence in lieu of those very seriously. Of course, this decision is a very controversial one, as is most decisions that occur due to threats of or freedom of speech versus security reasons. Um, many different conventions would probably handle this in very different ways. Some of them might up security and, 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 and do the cost associated with it. But others may take California's, California's position and do this thing where they decided to it be best that these um, these panels be removed for the good of the entire convention. Um, that being said, a lot of people are afraid that this decision can lead to conventions sort of or individuals who um, committed this act to be emboldened and to try it again for other conventions where they have controversial sort of panels that they don't want to have a part of the programming and and do this kind of threatening behavior to me i don't to me i don't quite see it personally in my opinion i don't see it as a slippery slope as many other people do um, the decision that califer made and this is in essence because the action that was committed towards califer and to the hotel was an illegal action. The person may have gotten away with it. The person who called him up may have been like, ah, I got away with it, so let me try it again. No, 
Because what they did was illegal. If they were caught doing it, they would have been, they would have received justice and consequences for this behavior. And if they try it again with other conventions or with the same convention, it's just going to be <clears throat> them trying their luck every time. So to the people, if they did, the people who did that, if you happen to be watching this for whatever reason, because you like to see your handiwork and blah, 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 because you get off on that sort of nonsense, let me just say, you're not in the position of the victor here. You're, you got lucky, in essence. If, you, if people continue this sort of behavior, conventions are going to catch on. And eventually, I'm going to put a safe word here, you're going to get, you're going to be serving a nickel, all right? So don't do it, because if you don't want to serve a nickel, just don't behave like this. I don't care if you disagree with the people who are running that panel or disagree with this, the activities being discussed in that panel. If, it, if the panel is discussing things that are of a legal, that are of a legal nature, a legal nature that they are allowed to do it as adults, that they are allowed to have those kind of assemblies as adults, and, and as long as there's no children present and, you know, you know, blind the, and stuff like that, they should be allowed to, to assemble in, in, in that environment if the convention allows it. And to me, it's unfortunate that the convention had to make a choice like this, and hopefully no other convention needs to make choices like this in the future. Um, <clears throat> that being said, don't keep trying to press your luck, son. You're going to get caught one day, all right? All right, so that was happened before the convention and affected the panels of the convention. Um, the next story occurred during the convention, and the Twitter's on all light about... Um, actually, the, the convention actually mentioned that the cops... Um, <clears throat> that there were actual LAPD people around, or, or I think it was LAPD, cops around, and that they were dealing with... Um, I guess PETA decided to show up, or the people for ethical treatment of animals decided to show up to the party and were protesting. And why the heck did we... Bob? Why did you pick this image? Oh my... Really? That, the, the, first off, that's not in California. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, 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 the slogan. Oh, so yeah. Okay, I, I can see where the slogan plays a part. That's kind of a funny slogan, considering my attire. I'd rather be naked than wear fur. The, be uh, the best part about this image, by the way, is um, the guys in the backgrounds in the business suits. They're like, ooh, naked ladies. One guy's got a camera and the other guy's like, oh. But anyways, um, <clears throat> so the controversial group of PETA... Um, was protesting. Now, at first, you know, furries were like, oh man, are they protesting us? You know, I mean, that, that question came up. And what ended up happening was, is um, it was later found out that they were not protesting us. They were protesting some other event that was happening in that, in that same plaza. What event is that? Nobody knows. Which shows how much of a good job they're doing. What are we protesting? I don't know. What are we protesting? Um, sometime in the immediate vicinity? I... I don't know. What? Huh? I don't have the memo, man. So, you know, having no... If you're going to protest something, please let us know what you're protesting. I mean, come on. Come on, guys. It's protesting 101. Come on, I mean, we need to know what you're upset about. If we don't know what you're upset about, how are we supposed to address anything? I mean, come on, guys. Come on. Oh, anyways. So, that ended up being sort of a, an interesting thing. People were, like, going, didn't Kagi talk about the, like, get these guys to go, hey, look, we're not, we're not, we don't wear actual fur. This is synthetic stuff, man. This is synthetic, man. Seriously. Seriously. Anyways, next, next on the list of uh, things, thing that happened after the convention, which once again is not connected to the first two things that happened at this convention. 
Oh, what's the last thing? Oh, we, um, well, that, that has nothing to do with anything. Oh, wait, hold on. That's from the OC Register, the OC Weekly Register, the Orange County Weekly Register. Um, if you guys don't remember what this picture was from, this was from another video on my channel, and there's a card up there, about the, the issue of the first murder in the furry fandom that occurred in Orange County. This tragic and unfortunate event, which occurred in September of 2016, um, revolved around sort of a, um, a young man of around the age of 23 murdering some love interest's parents and their friend. Like he killed, they killed like, th like him and an accomplice like killed three people or something like that. Allegedly, of course, because they're going to court. And I think the, the court case is happening sometime around right now. Um, <clears throat> but that was a big news story in the fandom. Um, I have a video up there about that. But this was sort of a OC Weekly's follow-up editorial piece on it, which was eh, kind of in poor taste. In hindsight, it's like it, it doesn't affect people as much as it used to. But at the time, it was like, oh my god, really? Uh, like, no furry would ask themselves, it's like, I wonder if they wore a disguise when murdering people. It's like, no. The, these, these costumes are pretty unique, guys. I mean, it's like, these are, these are better than fingerprints and DNA, man. I mean, geez, if I went up and killed somebody in this thing, like, people would know it was me. Ruins the whole point. Anyways. Still. Poor taste, all right? But anyway. They had this article that came out after the convention. And they were discussing this whole thing about... Um, like, literally, the article the article is no longer on their website. And this is where this whole controversy comes into play. The fir very first sentences of the article was, Well, I wasn't invited, but I crashed their party. Pro tip, journalists, that's against the convention rules. That's against most convention rules. If you're actually part of the media and are representing the media and are going to do an article for the media, you crashing the furry party is against the convention rules. And the convention is not going to stand by it. Now, sometimes the convention can do something about it if they have a good working relationship with the paper in question. And luckily, in this case, um, follow-up tweets from Califer indicate that they have a positive working relationship with the OC Weekly. Apparently, the person who wrote the article that quote-unquote crashed the convention was some sort of temp or freelancer who did an article for them. And so in order to maintain good graces with Califer, OC Weekly decided to remove the article from the website. Um, another issue that happened during the whole thing um, was that they um, used an image, and I'll link to the tweet below um, uh, regarding this thing, that they basically took this image, they, they took photographs at the convention, and then they had somebody basically do some sort of trace artwork style over it, and they use this as sort of like this whole tongue-in-cheek, like five types of furries you'll see at the convention. Um, and like there was like five categories, and one of them was like parents with little ones, um, the dealer rat, the dealer cats, as they called it in the article. Um, there was like, <clears throat> you had to have been there, man. You had to have read it. It didn't last very long. It was only up for a day. This article was only up for a day, man. Um, <clears throat> but... Basically, it was the, the dealer um, cat one that caused a big controversy because the artwork that they had used, that they had tailored or edited um, from the dealer's thing, the actual dealer had an actual picture of her, you know, setup and herself sitting behind it and then, you know, juxtaposed next to the image that OC Weekly ended up running. And what ended up happening is you could see kind of where the stipulate, like her sort of um, <clears throat> her like upsetness came from because it looked like she had a very clean table. It looked like it, I think her name was um, Heather Rose, I believe. 
my 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 ability with names is not that great, but as I said, I will I will link to the tweet below when I find it, um, and you can go support her and her art and stuff like that. Um, but her she had a picture of herself at the table, and it was it was a very nice setup, very clean artwork. Didn't see anything adult related on her table, which some which some dealers do deal adult artwork and say like eighteen plus and blah blah blah. Um, but whoever did this tracing drawing of her and tried to make her represent the whole of the dealer's den started adding things to her table in the image and their, in their stylized image, like some of the harmless stuff, like foxtails hanging up by her head. But there was also like indications of 18 plus artwork, like at the bottom there is like 18 plus is like talk. It's like, and like, like strategically placed stars and stuff like that. And so... It's like you got to be careful when doing stuff like this. First off, stylizing images and doing trace images of other people's likeness without their permission is very gray, morally gray. Obviously, people wouldn't have known it was her if she didn't come out and go, this is me. At, like, I had no idea that they were actual people that were being traced until someone brought it to my attention. But... But it is very morally gray. You, you, you need to get people's permission. And, and you know what? When you work with people's permission, you can do beautiful and wonderful things. You could actually talk with people. You could actually get to know people. You can actually and not go like, Ooh, I'm being sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. I'm in the bushes. You will not see me. You will not see me. I'm, I'm hidden. You can't see me. Oh, I, I feel like sneaky, man. I know, I know some people like to feel like sneaky, man, but... You could do so much more if you just go out there and just go, Hey dudes, I work for the OC Weekly. You want to talk to me about some stuff, man? What are you doing here, man? Are you having fun? Are you doing great? You're doing great, aren't you? It's like, what is this all? It seems, it seems sort of crazy, man. This thing's a trip. You know, have some fun with it. And if, you are, if you're more open about it, you can have some more fun with it. Um... And you might be able to make a, 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 a controversial art piece that doesn't make every furry out there go cringing. Like, this is, these aren't actual furries talking. These are people who are poor, who look like furries, but they aren't actually furries. Furries get murdered. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about if they were wearing a fursuit while doing it. <laughs> no! It's not like... It's like it, we'd be more, we would be more like... Dude, that that's that's gross. You know, you know, we would we would be more like, you know, is there anything we could do to help support the families and those who were harmed by this event? And that is what the fandom did in this case. So, in essence, just be yourselves. You know what I mean? You don't have to put up a front or hide away from us when talking about things. You know. Try to try to talk with people. You know what I mean. Try and try and engage with them a little bit more, um, in regards to the fandom. Let them be know that you're there. Um, let them know that you're doing an artwork piece. Um, if you're going to use their image or likeness in a certain piece, engage with them about it. Talk talk about whether or not you have permission to stylize them and stuff like that. Just be polite. And it's a good thing that the convention and OC Weekly seem to be on good terms and that they came to a discussion and got um, and finalized this and everything came out all right in the end. And, and at the end of the day, um, as far as like all these, all these, all these three things going on, all these three controversies going on and the convention held it together overall, I, I didn't hear anything um, too bad happening at the convention itself as far as big old controversies or letting these controversies become bigger than just like the, the the weird facets that they are and the fact that the convention itself right now is talking about well we know that these three big things happen it literally on their twitter feed i was, I was going to do this video regardless and then i looked at their twitter feed and they're like we're going to talk about these three big controversies in our own thing coming out and if when and when and if they do that i will put that i will add that information to the description below um, so that you can get their take on these three events that happened at this particular convention. Um, and I think it's pretty cool of them that they use, they're use they using social media very well. Um, and that, that is just my kind of criticism of, my critique of this, 
is that even during this whole controversial thing, they didn't let the controversy take over the convention. They still had images of like the events and they still engaged and showed pictures of fursuiters and, and people just having a good time at the convention. And in general, just having good work on their social media feed. Um, and so I, I give them praise on that regard. Um, and dealing with <laughs> this heck of a weekend that you guys had and good on you. And I hope that your convention continues um, to be successful. I hope that it has growth um, in the future. That's the one other interesting thing of note um, is that furry conventions typically rarely stagnate unless there's some sort of force behind it. And this one is sort of, it was 1,400 people there last year and now it's like high 1,300 range. So there was a minor minuscule dip in the attendance this year over last year. I hope that trend reverses for you guys, and um, I, hope, I wish you all the best of the future. And hopefully next year we'll go a little bit smoother <laughs> for you guys. But if you handle it as well as you did this year, I don't foresee any problems on that end. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to get the hot body here. Um, kick that like. Kick the subscribe button. Kick a comment in the comment section. Did you go to Califur this year? Um, how was your experience? Uh, did any of these weird events get you, uh, have you uh, scratching your head? Or did you just enjoy the con and just were blissfully unaware of it the whole time? Because that would be the best thing. <laughs> but anyways, once again, thank you for watching.